What's up everybody, I'm Matt Gary, and in this episode of Coding with the Fours, we're gonna go over what variables are and why you would use them when developing Apex classes in Salesforce. All right, everybody, welcome back to this introduction to Apex tutorial series where we learn the fundamental skills necessary to become a developer on the Salesforce platform. Today, we are going to be talking about what variables are, um, why you should use them, and then we'll just create a couple of variables to see how things work. Um, all right, so what is a variable? Simply put, a variable is just a way to store a value so that you can use it later on throughout your code. Um, as far as why you would want to store a value to use throughout your code, um, you're gonna, when you're manipulating things uh, and creating services, need ways to store different bits of data um, throughout the execution of your code. You know, it could be something as simple as storing a distance uh, a, between one point and another, or it could be storing the value of an opportunity, or it could be storing the name of a contact. Um, it could be storing, who knows, tons of things. And you're gonna need variables to store those values. So that's where they come in. Um, so now that we know what a variable is, just a store for a value um, that you can reference so that you can manipulate that value or just look at that value at some point in the future in your code, um, and why you would use them to store it so that you can actually manipulate values throughout your code, let's just take a look at a variable and uh, figure out <clears throat> how to create one and, and what all the different things when you create a variable mean. Uh, so let's just create one real quick. Uh, we'll create an integer, which is a number value that does not have decimal points. Integer distance equals one. So let's go through the different uh, things that we have here in this statement. So the first thing, integer, is like I said before, it's the type of your variable, right? So I want my variable type to be an integer, which is a whole number that can't have a decimal point. I want to name this integer distance. This can literally be anything. I could have named this taco. I could have named this chocolate. I could have named this uh, Batman. It doesn't really matter, right? Um, this is just a way to reference this variable's value throughout your code, like we'll see here in just a minute. But I'm gonna put this back to distance because ideally you should name your variable something that is useful to you and whoever else reads your code in the future. And then I'm setting this equal to the value of one. And you know, you could set it to really whatever value you wanted as long as it conformed to the constraints of type integer. And uh, you could also technically set it to nothing if you didn't want it declared there and you wanted to set this variable later on in your code. You wanted it here, you wanted the name of this variable so that you could store something in this variable later, but you don't wanna set it equal to anything just yet. You can do that. You can also set this equal to nothing if you wanted to, which is what null is. It basically means nothing. Um, so, lots of things you can do there. And if I wanted to reference this variable later, I could create a method. And just say, you know, something like system.debug this is the distance distance right when I put this distance in here I get access to the number one basically 
So if I ran this code, um, what we would see is we'd get the number one. So you know what? Why don't we just do that so that we can see how variables work. So I'm going to bring up what's called the uh, anonymous apex console here. And I am just going to create a new instance of our mapping service. And say mapping service dot calculate distance. And I know we haven't gone over all these things yet at all in this tutorial series. So don't freak out. We'll go over things like what this anonymous apex thing is, what uh, methods are, all that kind of stuff a little later in this tutorial series. Um, but I just want to show you this really quick. If we run this code, you can see this is the distance, right? That's the debug line that we have right here. And it output the value one, right? Let me zoom in here. Make sure my face isn't blocking this. And you can see this is the distance one, which is this thing right here, which is pretty cool, right? So we've got this uh, store for the value one. And there's tons of other stuff I can do with this variable too. I can change the value of this variable. So I can say distance equals two. And if I saved this and I ran it, you can see that now this is the distance equals two down here. <clears throat> oh boy. Uh, <laughs> I could add to it. So I could say distance plus two. I'd have to say uh, distance equals distance plus two. And that would set our variable distance equal to distance plus two. So the current value of distance, which is one. And so if we save this and we run it, you can see that that ends up making distance equal to three. And we can do lots of other things with variables too. We can check their value against the values of other variables. So we could say, you know, is distance equal to distance two or something like that. If We had uh, another variable called distance two declared up here. And um, yeah, so there's a ton that you can do with variables and they are, as you can already probably see, very useful. Um, there's a lot more to talk about with variables, um, what primitive and non-primitive variables are, whether they get passed by value or reference, um, what block scope is for variables, all that kind of stuff, what a class variable is, what a block, block scope level variable is, all that kind of stuff. So that is exactly why we have several more videos going over variables. So in the next video, we are going to go over uh, what primitive variables are, the different types of them, and uh, why, they're, why they're called primitives instead of non-primitive variables. Um, so if you want to keep learning more about uh, the Apex development language, uh, stick around. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, uh, like the video, and hit the bell so you get to know the next time that I upload another video in this series. Um, that is it for this one. I think we have a decent understanding of that a variable is a way to store data and that we can reference that variable by using its name throughout the code base, which is pretty cool, right? Um, all right, guys, that is it. I will see you in the next episode. Thank you.